Right, welcome to We Got A Problem, guys, and we are now officially in the banter era. The UK is a complete joke, but it's really not even funny. A short time ago today, maybe about an hour ago, Theresa May has released her Brexit deal, giving MPs the option to vote on having another referendum. So she is essentially allowing Labour and Conservative Remain MPs to ignore the first referendum and push for a new one in the hope that it says to remain. Saying her views on the second referendum are well known, but then allowing MPs to ignore the British people. So you can listen to what she had to say herself on the 10 points on the deal. I haven't uploaded the whole speech because it's like 30 minutes long and she's just talking rubbish through most of it in all honesty. I've listened to concerns from across the political spectrum. I've done all I can to address them. And today I'm making a serious offer to MPs across Parliament, a new Brexit deal. As part of that deal, I will continue to make the case for the Conservative Party to be united behind a policy that can deliver Brexit. Nine out of ten Conservative MPs have already given the withdrawal agreement their backing, and I want to reach out to every single one of my colleagues to make the very best offer I can to them. I've also listened carefully to those who've been arguing for a second referendum. I've made my own view on this clear on many, ti many times. I do not believe this is a route that we should take because I think we should be implementing the result of the first referendum, not asking the British people to vote in a second one. But I recognise the genuine and sincere strength of feeling across the House on this important issue. The Government will therefore include in the Withdrawal Agreement Bill, at introduction, a requirement to vote on whether to hold a second referendum. And this must take place before the Withdrawal Agreement can be ratified. And if the House of Commons were to vote for a referendum, it would be requiring the government to make provisions for such a referendum, including legislation if it wanted to ratify the withdrawal agreement. So to those MPs who want a second referendum to confirm the deal, you need a deal and therefore a withdrawal agreement bill to make it happen. So let it have its second reading and then make your case to Parliament. Finally, we cannot expect MPs to vote on the same two documents they previously rejected, so we will seek changes to the political declaration to reflect this new deal. So our new Brexit deal makes a ten-point offer to everyone in Parliament who wants to deliver the result of the referendum. One, the Government will seek to conclude alternative arrangements to replace the backstop by December 2020 so that it never needs to be used. Two, a commitment that should the backstop come into force, the government will ensure that Great Britain will stay aligned with Northern Ireland. Three, the negotiating objectives and final treaties for our future relationship with the EU will have to be approved by MPs. Four, a new workers' rights bill that guarantees workers' rights will be no less favourable than in the EU. Five, there will be no change in the level of environmental protection when we leave the EU. Six, the UK will seek as close to frictionless trade in goods with the EU as possible while outside the single market and ending free movement. Seven, we'll keep up to date with EU rules for goods and agri-food products that are relevant to checks at the border, protecting the thousands of jobs that depend on just-in-time supply chains. Eight, the government will bring forward a customs compromise for MPs to decide on to break the deadlock. Nine, there will be a vote for MPs on whether the deal should be subject to a referendum. And ten, there will be a legal duty to secure changes to the political declaration to reflect this new deal. All of these commitments will be guaranteed in law, so they will endure at least for this Parliament. The revised deal will deliver on the result of the referendum. And only by voting for the withdrawal agreement bill at second reading can MPs provide the vehicle Parliament needs to determine how we leave the EU. So if MPs vote against the second reading of this bill, they are voting to stop Brexit. If they do so, the consequences could hardly be greater. Reject this deal and leaving the EU with a negotiated deal any time soon will be dead in the water. And what would we do then? Some suggest leaving without a deal. But whatever you think of that outcome, Parliament has been clear, it will do all it can to stop it. If not no deal, then it would have to be a general election or a second referendum that could lead to revocation and no Brexit at all. 
Who believes that a general election at this moment, when we've still not yet delivered on what people instructed us to do, is in the national interest? I do not. And my views on second referendum are well known. Look at what this debate is doing to our politics. Extending it for months more, perhaps indefinitely, risks opening the door to a nightmare future of permanently polarised politics. Look around the world and consider the health of liberal Democrat, democratic politics. And look across the United Kingdom and consider the impact of failing to deliver on the clear instruction of the British people in a lawful referendum.